Hello everyone, this is Abi, aka Only Abi Doang, and today I'm gonna be showing you 10 features you might not know in The Sims 4 for Ren, the newest expansion pack for the game. These features might be fascinating, mind blowing, or useful throughout your gameplay. Without further ado, let's check them out. This pack lets you run or live in a multi unit lot or apartments that you can build. Up to 8 Sims can live in one unit. Throughout the time, you might encounter various events when in the rental lot. There are two types of them, community and emergency events. Emergency events requires the owner's intervention to sort it out. If done properly, the unit rating will increase but if you don't finish it in time, it'll be lowered instead. As a property owner, certain events can also be taken care of from the distance, such as by mailing something or hiring a contractor to take care of it. But that might not be enough sometimes. There are 15 rental events in total. The electrical failure event will break all electrical objects in the unit. Even the lights will not work. All of the broken electric objects need to be repaired or replaced to solve this event. The water leak event will cause several water puddles to appear and break all plumbing objects in the unit. You can either mop the puddle several times or repair or replace all the broken plumbing objects to solve this. The garden blight event will cause several plants in your lot to become blighted and die at a rapid rate. You can uproot all of these blighted plants or deploy a blight spray that costs 250 simoleons. The pool algae event will spawn patches of green algae in your rental lot swimming pool, making swimmers uncomfortable. To solve this, you can swim back and forth to clean the algae yourself or use a chemical algae destroyer that costs 250 simoleons. The explosive malfunction event will cause the stove, oven, or grill in a unit to suddenly explode and cause fire. Your sim will need to replace them to solve this. The haunting event will summon a ghost around your unit that possesses objects. To solve this, you can try to confront the ghost directly which may take several tries or exorcise the ghost when it's possessing an object for 400 simoleons. The cursed event will summon this cursed book in a unit causing unfortunate events like constant slipping and spontaneous fires. You can either destroy the cursed book which will move the curse onto you but just for one day or mail it away which may make the event to reoccur later. The insect infestation event will cause cockroaches to appear all over the unit's floor. You need to either stomp them down 5 times or deploy a fumigation device for 400 simoleons to clear it. The sewage leak event will cause all the toilet in the units to be broken and let out these smelly greenish sewage puddles. You can flush the toilet out which might clear it up but there's a chance for reoccurrence or you can also replace or repair the toilet. The nuisance event which can only happen when you play as a tenant will cause you to feel uncomfortable with your neighbors, usually because of the bad smell. As a tenant, you can either call the property owner to sort it out or leave a passive aggressive note to your neighbor. The trash overload event will spawn trash piles around your unit and make all your trash cans to always be full. It can be solved by emptying the trash can 5 times or by calling a trash removal service so they can dispose them immediately. The tenant revolt event will cause tenants to start a protest in front of the rental lot. You can call your property owner and ask for better conditions if you're a tenant, or promise for better conditions to one of the protesting tenants if you're the owner. The Charity Gift Drive Community event applies to all units where you can participate by donating something by using the mailbox. Tenants will also give each other presents and flock to the mailbox to donate. The Maintenance Day Community event also applies to all units where sims are encouraged to clean or repair some stuff in the unit at least 5 times. Some tenants may also join in. The Pet Adoption Drive community event can only happen if you have cats and dogs expansion pack. Some stray cats and dogs will come to your property and you can participate by petting these good boys and gals a bunch of times. If you don't want these events to occur, you can turn them off in the game settings. Unfortunately, one of the downsides of living in a rental unit is that you still need to go through a loading screen even though you just want to visit your neighbors and it's pretty disappointing. Even then, you can still find tenants hanging outside of their unit, especially if you've set up a shared space. They can interact with the objects you've put around, such as taking care of plants, using gym equipment, grilling some dishes, and more. They can even use interactive objects from other packs, like playing basketballs, lighting up a campfire, playing with the swings, doing yoga, and if you place down some laundry objects from laundry day stuff pack like washing machines, dryers, wash tubs, or clotheslines, you can even find them doing laundries from time to time. Placing these objects can really make your rental unit much livelier. When creating a multi-rent lot, and pardon for my ugly apartment build, I let myself create this abomination. You can set rooms that you've built to be assigned to either a certain unit or as a shared space. Normally, you can only assign up to 6 types of units, but this limit can be removed by using cheats. Activate your cheat console and type in this code, bb.increase rental unit cap space on, and then press enter. After entering this cheat, the 6 unit limit will be taken off and you can now add as many more units as you want. 
In this example, I created a small 12 unit apartment or koskosan for my fellow Indonesians out there. But according to this tweet from Asim Guru, the limits are almost endless. Keep in mind that with the cheat on, you can only have 99 units per save file, not per lot. This might affect your game performance though depending on how strong your PC or console. I haven't tested it much yet, but please use with caution. Of course, you still need to pass through loading screens when you want to visit your tenants. But now with more than 6 loading screens! Mold is a new lot challenge introduced in this pack. If enabled, they will appear whenever there is a puddle, dirty plumbing objects, or overflowing trash. There are two types of mold, allergenic mold which will make sims get sporiosis and become dazed the longer they are exposed to it, and toxic mold which can be pretty dangerous. For toxic molds, there are three stages of its growth, mild, severe, and deadly. And it can even spread too. The higher its growth stage, the more dangerous it is. You can get rid of these molds in three different ways. By cleaning them directly, setting them on fire which may burn yourself too, and deploying a mold be gone bomb for 750 simoleons which will clear all molds around and cure your disease immediately. If you're exposed by toxic molds though, you will develop a disease called moldenitis. There are three stages of it, mild moldenitis which is the first stage in the form of an uncomfortable buff, severe moldenitis in the form of a dazed buff, and deadly moldenitis which is very uncomfortable, and the disease will advance as long as the sim is continuously exposed to deadly molds. Your sim will also develop symptoms like itching, vomiting, and the worst being in the final stage where they will develop dark patches along their body and walk differently. You need to stop getting exposed and let the debuff expire in order for it to be cured. If your sim is still being exposed for too long while in the final stage, your sim will become delirious, act like an infected zombie for a second and then collapse as they become one with the mold. Man, they could've made it more fun and make them become a mold zombie or something, but nah, they'll just die. Anyway, the ghosts of those who died of mold will have green mold inside their chest, have green aura around them and will float in a different way. They will also have special abilities like spoiling food, blowing fertilizing spores on plants, creating fungal overgrowth when on the ground to summon different kinds of mushroom plants, and spawning allergenic molds when on the floor, but they cost their energy need to be performed. This pack introduces several utility objects for your house that have some useful functions. First is the electrical fuse box. If added to your lot, it'll help in reducing your electrical bill so you don't have to pay as much. There's also a water heater which can also help make your water utility usage more efficient. You may need to perform maintenance on them once in a while to reduce the chance of them breaking. Broken fuse box will cause all the lamps in your lot flickers, surprising the sims inside, and broken water heater will force your sim to only use cold water when showering or taking a bath, making your sims uncomfortable. They can be repaired of course. Both can be upgraded to lessen the chance of breaking, but water heater specifically can also be upgraded so that it also works in off-the-grid lot. There's also the solar-powered water heater, which doesn't need any sort of maintenance whatsoever and will never break, but it can save water utility and provide warm water only when the sun is out, so you'll be forced to use cold water at night or when the weather is cloudy if you have seasons. If you don't want any of these, there are non-functional versions of these objects too, just as a decor. This pack also introduces both an air conditioning unit and a radiator. You can turn on the air conditioning unit where it will make sims inside energized because of the breeze. You can also turn on the radiator as well, making your sim happy because of the warmth. If you have seasons expansion pack, these objects can also affect your sim's body temperature. They can also be synced with a thermostat if you place one in your lot so you don't have to turn them on manually. This pack introduces a new part-time career called the Handy Person Career, with three levels of positions. Like most part-time jobs, you can pick between two shifts. This career focuses mostly on handiness and gardening skills. When your shift is on, you'll get to choose whether you want to go to work or perform various work-from-home assignments. These assignments include watering plants, fixing broken stuff, researching from the computer, installing upgrades, attending local neighbor issues, mentoring, and more. It also has its own chance cards when you're at work. If you reach level 2 of the career, you'll unlock this handy person outfit and create a sim. And if you reach level 3, you'll unlock a new reward trait called Resourceful Repairer. This trait makes it so that you'll get more bonus upgrade parts when repairing something. The trait will also retain permanently even if you quit the career. Tomarang, which is the new world from this pack, is honestly a pretty small world. It only has 2 districts and a total of 9 lots, which really sucks to be honest. The world also has various different rabbit hole buildings, rabbit hole meaning buildings and places that can be entered but you can see what's happening inside. First we go to Morensong district. There's a temple here called Tinsu temple that you can visit and while it looks great, it'll give you a simple happy buff after entering and that's it. 
Then there's this local fish market that you can enter to buy some fish and its related items. After that, we go to Koh Sapa district, which is surprisingly pretty huge for our district. There's a tiger sanctuary here that you can visit at day. When entering, you'll be met with some chance cards that may or may not reward you. You may get positive buffs, negative buffs, or even collectibles. You can also donate for 10 simoleons or 50 simoleons, which will make you inspired or even adopt a tiger. You're not getting them as a pet though, but rather as a form of 100 simoleon donations, plus you'll be mailed with these two objects, a tiger poster and a tiger plush named Tibbert. Interacting with the plush will make your sim happy, and sims from toddler to older can also pet its head. At night though, you can sneak into the sanctuary to try and get some stuff. You may get random upgrade parts, collectibles like a tassel, which is a new collection in this pack that I'll explain later, or even some snacks. But if caught, you'll be temporarily banned from visiting the sanctuary. Finally, there's this one last rabbit hole in the form of a cave, but you need to swim there since it's located in a whole different island. Or you can also use the water vehicles from Island Living. The only interaction that you can do to the cave is explore. Like before, this gives you several chance cards that you can pick each with their own random outcomes and text too. You may either get positive buffs, negative buffs, or one random tassel. It may also give you some lore about Tomarang and other The Sims 4 lores. There are 5 new personality traits introduced in this pack, which are cringe, generous, child of the village, nosy, and finally wise, with the last one being an elder exclusive trait. Sims with the wise trait are very powerful. They will learn skill much faster, make friends easier, have faster angry, tense, and uncomfortable buff decay, perform better in certain careers, get more satisfaction points from completing wands, reflect on life to gain random emotional buffs, and can give other sims wisdom or important lessons to potentially give them a bit of a boost. So now you might be wondering, how do you get the wise trait on existing sims? Well, the wise trait can be obtained randomly once an adult sim grows up to an elder. You'll get the option to accept this trait or decline it. If accepted, this won't replace any personality traits you already have, so you basically get a bonus trait. There are many factors that increase this chance to happen, such as having high logic, programming, writing, or rocket science skill, as well as skills from other packs like wellness, knitting, medium, research and debate, or robotics. Having certain personality traits from the get-go will also help. These traits are bookworm, geek, genius, creative, or even traits from other packs like adventurous or overachiever. Certain obtained reward traits from the reward store or after completing aspirations can also help. However, having traits such as cringe, snob, hot-headed, or erratic will prevent sims from having the opportunity to obtain this trait. There are 4 new aspirations in this pack, 5-star property owner, found of Tomarani knowledge, discerning dweller, and one more that stood out to me and I want to talk about is seeker of secrets. This aspiration basically revolves around snooping around, finding other same secrets, breaking into someone's home, or blackmailing them. Secrets are basically one of the new additional info that you can find out from a sim where there are different types of them. Anyway, this aspiration has 3 levels and the final level mentions something about finding a tiger inspector badge. Yeah, remember the tiger sanctuary? Well, you can find this badge if you successfully sneak into it at night. Do keep in mind that you will never be able to obtain this badge through sneaking into the sanctuary unless you have the third level of this aspiration checklist active. You still can't do anything with it though until you complete the rest of the aspiration. After you manage to do that, you'll get Pry of the Tiger reward trait. Besides making your sim be more successful when sorting through junk mail, this trait will also give you a perfect alibi when you get caught breaking into someone's home, therefore not ruining your relationship with the sim. Your sim will basically say that they're checking their home to ensure that there's no tiger breaking in or something. Thing. You cheeky bastard. You'll also be able to brag about being a tiger inspector to other sims. Note that both of these badge perks will only work if you have both the reward trait equip and the badge cap in your inventory. There are two new collectible sets in this pack. First are these colorful tassels which I have mentioned previously. There are 10 types of them and they can be obtained through various methods, like buying them from this artsy stall from the night market in Morensong district, visiting or sneaking into the tiger sanctuary, exploring the previously mentioned beach cave, or digging up these sand piles that can be found on the beaches in Koh Sapa district. If you've found all 10 of them, you'll be provided with this piece of lore about Tomarang and the option to combine all of them will now be available. Once done, it'll reward you with this unlocked colorful shirt with all the tassels attached to it. Next is the colorful marbles collectible. There are 15 types of marbles and there are ways to get more of them. You can buy some from the night market. You can also use the marbles game ring to play for keeps where you bet a marble in order to gain a new one when you win. Marbles are associated with motor skills so be sure to increase that in order to win more marble games. But I think the play for keeps interaction is bug right now because after winning a game of marble, my sim didn't get any new marbles, just the one they've previously betted. 
I hope they'd fix this in the future. You can also get more marbles by trading marbles with other sims. Even though older sims can play marbles, they can still collect and trade them with others. Older sims can also rummage through a kid's toy box to find some marbles and it can be spammed for several tries too. Oh, and if you place them on the ground, sims may sleep when they walk on it. Pets can also eat marbles laying on the ground too, so keep an eye out for that. Don't worry though, they'll be fine. To prevent this, you can place your marbles in this marble jar if you want. Anyway, you'll be mailed with these plaques if you completed these collection sets. Before ending things off, I just want to show you the new dance moves for Sims with the Child of the Village trait called the Tomarani Twist and also the cringe dance move as well. Anyway, thank you so much everyone for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed the video and if you do, feel free to subscribe to my channel for more Sims videos like this. See you later!